Hello, I'm Paddy, and I run a media production business here in Bristol called creativemedia.org.uk. And as well as doing that, I like to do reviews. And today I had the chance to sit on some rather high-end office furniture. So I thought I'd share what I found out with all of you. The first chair I sat on was the Boss Design Cosa chair. Cosa and Boss is kind of making me think of Mafia a bit. It's an odd looking chair. It's got this strange kind of plastic moulded thing, which is very funky and very designer. But is it comfortable? Well, I, I, you, you'll, you'll find out in this, in this um, review that I really don't like arms on chairs. I like arms I can take off if I don't want them. So these are clearly arms you can't take off. They're, you're stuck with them. I mean, stylishly, it looks beautiful, but, or if you're into that kind of thing. But I didn't really get on with that too well. I thought the back was quite comfortable, but there's just nothing to adjust it with. So that's quite limited. The adjusters I did find were on this side. This little button is what adjusts the height of the chair. It's a standard gas lift if you've ever sat on a modern office chair. You'll have probably experienced the gas lift. Most of them have a kind of lever sticking out here, which sometimes, depending on what shoes you're wearing and how low the chair is, you can end up getting your foot caught under that and unexpectedly dropping yourself down. I've done that before wearing boots. I've kind of stuck my feet on the legs here and then suddenly I've hit the lever with my heel and dropped to the ground, which has been a bit surprising. These little buttons very neat and out of the way, but they do require quite a bit of pressure. If you've got small fingers or not very strong hands, or if you've just been on a climbing wall and you've got really worn out fingers or arthritis, something like that, then you're going to find these a bit troublesome to press. A big lever is easier to use. So that's another downside on this chair. Now on to the Flock Hag Capsico chair. Yeah, it's quite a name and quite an odd looking chair. I mean, that could be something out of a gynecology ward, couldn't it? Or some kind of battle chair or who knows. Um, it quite it kind of appealed to me from, from a distance when I saw the chair. I thought, that looks crazy, but it's probably totally impractical. But actually, of all the chairs, this was my favourite. Very adjustable. And firstly, arms, actually. I'll mention the arms. These are kind of not quite flat with the back, but they don't stick out the sides. The reason I hate arms on chairs, or non-removal arms, is because if you actually want to push the chair under your desk, often those arms will catch on the desk and you've, you've got this big chair sticking out. You can't get it out of the way like you can with a normal chair. If you're close to the desk, you're kind of trapped in there with these arms either side. But these don't do that. You can kind of put your elbows back on them and relax a bit. And they're padded too. They're not like the kind of hard plastic ones on the other chairs. So I quite like that. And the looks are crazy, but comfort is the main thing. This one is very adjustable. There's all kinds of levers and knobs and switches and things underneath. You can tilt this seat. You can slide it in and out. I think this knob here adjusts this kind of dome of the chair. I'm not entirely sure on that one. And the gas lift lifts it up a lot higher than the other chairs. A good kind of 10, 20 centimetres higher than the others. So you can use it as a kind of architect stool as well as an office chair. It's very versatile. Interesting thing about these casters, I thought the, the one we had was broken because I, I sat on it and I couldn't move. But as soon as you sit down, these casters will lock. So you can't sort of have office races on it, which is a bit of a shame because this kind of crazy chair would be great for having a, an office race down the corridor. But you could argue that having a, a locked caster when you're sitting down is a good thing because you're not going to roll off unexpectedly. But it could be awkward if you just want to shift yourself forwards 20 centimetres without getting up or roll yourself across to a different desk. You can't do that on this chair. You'd have to get off it and pull it along behind you. So that is maybe a good thing or maybe a bad thing. The back will go up and down as well. You can adjust just about everything on this one. And I do like it. The human scale different world chair. It really is felt different. I'm not quite sure what that is, but I guess this makes a bit of a joke. All these chairs I'm reviewing today are, are by designers and they've probably got a bit of cognitive surplus so they're sticking in a bit of a joke sometimes as well, possibly. That's my theory anyway. The interesting thing about this chair, it seems unlike a kind of big stuffed foam thing here, 
this seems to be like a kind of stretched surface with, with some padding as well. But I reckon you might not get the disadvantage of your average padded seat, which has got a hard surface with foam on top. And eventually your, your sit bones stick through that foam and hit the hard surface. And then you're sitting on something uncomfortable. Maybe, you know, if the foam settles after years of sitting, or maybe just sitting on it for six hours solid, you kind of sink through that foam and it gets a bit uncomfortable. But this seems to be like it's, there's not a hard thing underneath it, so that's a bit more comfortable. Also on the back here, there's a pivot here and a bit of a spring. So this, this whole back pivots on the, these pivots here. There's no adjuster that I can see for that. This one has some buttons instead of a lever for gas lift, like I mentioned for the other seat. And this one is particularly difficult for small fingers. There's a slide on this one, a slide button on the other side, but the sliding mechanism doesn't feel smooth at all. It feels awkward to move the seat forwards. And since this is such a big seat, it doesn't really feel like it makes a big difference. On the, the flat seat, that felt like it made a big difference sliding that seat forward, especially if you had a tilt on it. And again, this just feels like another big bulky chair. I don't like these the, the way these legs slope down. I, I like to put my feet on these sometimes, and if they're sloping, Obviously some people don't put their feet on the legs, they put them on the floor like you're supposed to, but one to bear in mind anyway. This is the Vitra ID Meshback Task Chair, another meshback. This here has got this kind of lumbar support bit in here, and there's a rather clumsy bit of plastic here which you can slide up and down, which doesn't really slide very well and doesn't feel like it's well made. And for me it didn't really make much difference to how the seat felt. My colleague who's actually properly got a bad back, he found that pretty uncomfortable. This one's got quite extremely sloping legs, so I wouldn't want to put my feet on these. That adjuster there adjusts the, the kind of springiness of the back, how much it springs back and forwards when you lean back on it. There's a switch in here which will lock the back as well, which confused me a bit actually. I switched that on lock and then was twiddling this and nothing was happening, so as soon as I switched that off, I could kind of bounce back and forwards and adjust how bouncy it was with here. There's a, a gas lift lever here, but it's very narrow and I find that quite awkward. I, I expected a knob or tab on the end of the gas lift so you could put a couple of fingers under it and lift it. But this was just seemed to be a piece of metal dowel, so that wasn't ideal. It could be that there was meant to be an end that got broken off on our model, but possibly it's just a very narrow lever, which I didn't like very much. So um, out of those four, my favourite was definitely this one. And yeah, all the other ones just seem to be bulky and big and not really suited for sitting behind a desk. They're probably more boss chairs actually, particularly at, at the price. So if you're looking for a, a practical working chair, I think that's your one to go for really. We just had one table to review and we've got the Flock RBM Twisted Little Star Table. This is a fairly small table, it's a bit hard to tell from the picture, but it's the kind of table you might use to do a presentation or you could sit four people around to have a, a meeting or a cup of tea, a slice of cake, but probably not enough room to have a, a proper meal on it. And it's, as you can see, it's an odd shape, the, the twisted star here with these kind of indentations in the side. If you've got another of these, you'd have to, to line up the long ends and the short ends like like that. Obviously you can't put it up against the wall because there's going to be a gap. So I don't really see what the advantage is of these strange shapes. I really don't get it. But it's a strong table. I'm sure it's made out of very nice sustainable bits and you know with very good employment, welfare and stuff. But it does seem a lot to spend on a small table that's a strange shape. The next chairs we were looking at were kind of waiting room chairs or ones you might have in a sort of breakout space as they call them or for meetings possibly. So the Flock RBM Moor chair is actually stackable which is a good thing and it's got a slightly soft cushion on it and a natural wood back here which has got a nice natural spring in it and rails as well which make it fairly easy to drag around on a carpet. I think small chairs should always be stackable. This chair is actually rather heavy to be something you'd be stacking. 
I don't think it's something I'd want to sit on for very long either, despite the padding. It's quite a hard material. Maybe you could put an extra cushion on it, but maybe that would spoil the design ethic. I also felt that this chair, particularly if you stacked it a few times, it could end up getting a bit bashed and looking a bit shabby after a while. It is nice to have so much space underneath it though. You, know, you could put your laptop down underneath it or a cup of coffee or whatever. There's, there's room there that's there's not clutter. The Norton Always four-leg chair is, is definitely more of a, a waiting room chair than something you'd be sitting around a table with. It's pretty heavy, it's heavier than it could be. And I've seen much cheaper chairs in this kind of design and with a similar amount of comfort. It being so heavy, having four legs means you can't really push it along on the carpet. You've got to pick it up really to move it around. Uh, it won't stack, of course. And, you know, in, in a food and drink environment, which you might have in a, in a breakout area in an office, once you've spilt something on all this fabric, that's going to look a bit unpleasant as well. You have to clean it. The cushion doesn't come off from what I could make out. So, yeah, quite comfortable to sit on. Not quite big enough to kind of put your feet up and sort of, you know, curl up in. But it's quite roomy, there's good width there. You could fit a person and a half in there of an average size. This is a much more of a curl up chair. You can definitely kind of put your feet up in there with your laptop in your lap. And it's got rails on it, so it's fairly heavy. Not horribly heavy, but fairly heavy and the rails mean you could push it along, drag it around on the carpet without too much trouble. Nice high back so you can sort of feel a bit of privacy, you could read a book in it or work on a laptop or whatever you fancied. But no arms, you could actually put a cup of coffee or a plate of cake on. And I don't think this is a chair you'd actually fall asleep in, but you could kind of curl up on it. Good for work because going to sleep at work is probably a bad move anyway. This is another kind of meeting chair for sitting around the table. I really hated this one. I found it uncomfortable. It somehow managed to be very cold to sit on as well. And it seemed to have a bit of springiness in it, but not in a way that made it more comfortable. The back here dug into my back. The chair was uncomfortable, just dug into my bum at the back. You could probably stack it. I think it, it looks like it should be really lightweight, but it's not. And they've gone for that kind of hipstery fashion of trying to make a chair that looks like the, the really uncomfortable old wooden chairs you might have sat on at school. Yeah, it's an interesting design, that nice curve shape. Very trendy, but if you like trendy chairs, just look at pictures of them, don't sit on them. So this is probably my least favourite chair of, of all the ones I sat on today. Now this chair is quite attractive. It looks like if they'd put in a bit of e extra thought into it, they could have made it stackable. But it is very heavy. The um, surface is a bit hard, so it's a bit uncomfortable still. There's a nice spring in the back. It would make a, a good sort of dining table chair or a meeting chair. With the arms on, it might not get under your desk at a meeting though. They do a version without arms as well, and I think they do versions with padding on as well. The wood feels very nice to put your hands on, but it's not the most comfortable thing. You wouldn't want to sit in a long meeting on one of those. Okay, we're on to the stools now. You might even call them stool samples. If you've not heard of it already, and you've got a strong stomach, or you're not eating anything at the moment, look up the Bristol stool scale. I'm based in Bristol. These stools I really didn't like at all. They're, they're made of metal. I guess it's steel or something. And they look very much like they're designed to look like the old stools used to get in sewing factories in the 1960s. This design down here is, you know, very design but it's not a practical place to put your feet when you're sitting on the stool you want something to put your heels on so you're not got you haven't got all your weights on your back of your thighs on that hard wooden edge there because that can just cut off your circulation and hurt as well it's horribly over engineered this you know angle bracket stuff here they're probably very strong you could probably stand an elephant on them but they're heavy they're not particularly comfortable and they're not designed with any bottom in mind. A lot, a lot of stools have got a bit of a carved shape. There's no handle on the top, handle hole for picking them up, which a lot of stools have. So I'm not impressed with these at all. Somebody thought about the design first and not really thought about how comfortable they're going to be to sit on. The Nortone Pinch Low Stool. Can't really tell from the picture. This stool, 
if you, that's what you call it, is about a foot, foot and a half high. And I'm sure it's designed to look like some kind of saddle or something from a camel. It's comfortable enough to sit on, to put a bit crudely, your, your crack would line up with these, with these um, lines here. Not super soft, these sides are very hard, they're all fabric covered, so there's always a risk of getting it dirty. I think it's some kind of hard wearing woolen covering on it. I don't really see the point of it. If I want a low stool, I'd want something I could easily pick up in one hand, and this is quite heavy. There's nothing you can grip onto to pick it up in one hand. You could probably shove it around with your feet a bit, but I'd much rather have like a librarian's kickstool with wheels on and a cushion on top or something like that, which you could actually kick under a table. If you could actually put wheels on this, it'd be quite entertaining. You'd have some kind of horse race down the office corridor, and that'd be a lot of fun, or some kind of bucking bronco competition or dodgems game or something. That'd be great to, to wheel around on with your feet, but no wheels, no fun. You can sit on them sideways. For a child to play horse on, they'd probably be a little bit wide this way, and for an adult to play horse on, they're not really tall enough, so I'm not impressed at all with the, the Norton Princh low stool, even if it were cheap, and it's not cheap. And there's a lot of space inside, it's, it's not full of soft padding, so you could, have, you could put drawers in it or something to store something, but it's not got anything like that, it's just got a load of empty space in, I guess. Last of the stools, it's one I quite like, the orange box on your J's cafe stool. I've just looked up on your J's, apparently means on your own. Well I've learnt something today. It was a stool for lonely people, knocking back a whiskey in a bar, possibly. Well apart from the strange name, and I guess it's not made out of orange boxes either, it's actually my favourite stool out of the two, and pretty good stool anyway. Nice place to put your feet, so you're not going to cut off your circulation when you sit on it. A nice big stool, there's some fabric on there and some padding. It's got a bit of a curve as well, it's, it looks a bit like some kind of pagoda, but it's comfortable enough. You're obviously meant to sit with your feet on this side or on that side. Um, you can sit the other way, but there's nothing to put your feet there. But the good thing of that is that there is a lot of space. I think often on the stool it's kind of interesting to twine your feet around the uprights or swing your legs or whatever and there's plenty of space for all kinds of leg and feet activities on this. It's not a, a super lightweight stool but compared to the other one I looked at it's a lot lighter and certainly sturdy enough. Maybe not elephant proof like the other one was but good enough for standing on to reach something high and you can't see from this picture but a nice touch is they've put a little metal strip along the top corner of these bars here which I guess is to stop you wearing away the wood with your feet. That was the last of my pieces of furniture. Now I'm gonna reveal and react to the prices. So first, the Boss Design Cozy Chair, that goes for 300 pounds plus. I think a lot of that is on the design. It's a fairly basic chair, really. Next, the Flock Hag Capsico Chair. I think the model I tried with all the adjustments is 800 pounds or more. 800 pounds for an office chair, whoo. They do other versions that seem to be cheaper, but I think the one that has all the adjustment features that I mentioned is £800. Next, the Human Scale Different World Chair, with its slightly bouncy, pivoty back. That is £300 or more. The Vitra ID Mesh Back Chair will set you back over £500, with its rather annoying lumbar thing, which feels very cheap quality, not what you'd expect on a £500 boss chair like that. The twisted table, which I really didn't like very much at all, that will cost a thousand pounds or more. Thousand pounds for a silly shaped table. A very heavy silly shaped table. I'm not going to be rushing out to buy one of those. The Nur chair, the one that's probably more comfortable than most of the other ones I've looked at today of, of this kind and stackable. Stackable chair, £200 or more. The four leg chair, again the Nortone always, four leg chair, that will set you back over £500. And then lovely big curl up and not quite go to sleep, Nortone always lounge chair costs you, wait for it, £1,400 or more. I'd need a good sit down after that. The Nortone bounce chair, which I really hated, 
that would cost over £300. The Nortone Poly Armchair, which looks like a fairly innocuous sort of dining chair. Price for that, £700 or more. The Norton Construct Bar Stool, which looks like salvage from some kind of factory, £500 each or more. The Nortone Pinch Bucking Bronco kind of horse saddle thing, £500 or more. And lastly, the On Your Jays stool, which I quite liked, a mere £400 plus for that one. I will say at this point, after having been so shocked at all these prices, what you're paying for is not just a really good chair, and some of these aren't really good chairs. You're also paying for very interesting design, and if you're the kind of person that likes to have a chair that is particularly interesting and will impress people, you're going to get that. You're also paying for a designer rather than just somebody that is making something to sit on. They, they want to make something that looks beautiful. You're also paying for good environmental standards. I haven't looked at all these factories, but certainly Flock have quite a lot of environmental claims on their sites. Lots of recycling and nice sourcing of products. And you're probably paying for better paid workers. You're probably not supporting sweatshops and unethical trading practices. So it's not all about getting the cheapest, but I do think these pieces of furniture are particularly expensive. I'd recommend going for second-hand stuff if you want to be super green and super cheap. Get yourself a second-hand chair, and you can have a whole variety of chairs as well. Thanks for watching, and enjoy your sitting. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>